Income tax, 2023-2024. Self-employment tax, otherwise known as SE tax. Who must pay self-employment tax? Part number two. Get ready and some coffee so we can do some tax interpretations with income tax preparation. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com 2023-2024. Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers Listed Property, and more tax year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically an income statement, most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus deductions resulting in taxable incomes, the Schedule C rolls into line one income of the formula. Remember, in the Schedule C itself, basically an income statement as well, having business income minus business expenses, which you could call business deductions resulting in, in essence, net business income, which is what rolls in from the Schedule C to line one income of the formula, this income tax formula outlining the calculation on the form 1040 of which we see the first page here the schedule c ultimately rolling in to line number eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income the schedule c rolls into line three business income or loss this is the schedule c profit or loss from business having a PL profit loss or income statement format income minus expenses expenses basically being business deductions typically having the largest category of items we now focusing on the self-employment tax which we touched on in a prior presentation continuing with at this point in time remembering that if you're looking at the form 1040 we first think about calculating the federal income tax however if you have Schedule C business, then you will most likely have to be dealing with self-employment tax if you have a positive income number at least. And the self-employment tax is kind of the equivalent to the payroll taxes that you would be paying if you were a W-2 employee. So a quick recap here. If you were a W-2 employee, you would have withholdings taken out of your payroll by your employer because the IRS has made the employer the business into their tax collector. So then they're going to take out both the federal income tax withholdings and the Social Security and Medicare reported to you as well as the IRS on the W-2. Obviously, the withholdings have a big impact on the calculation of the Form 1040 because usually we're gonna to have to overpay so that we avoid penalties and interest. That's what results in having a refund when we file our taxes. However, the Social Security and Medicare is usually just an informational format on the W-2 because it has already been paid, number one, and because it's not quite as complicated as the federal income tax, it was paid exactly and therefore no adjustment needs to be made on the form 1040 no more taxes needing to be paid no more uh, refund needing to be given on the social security and medicare but if you're a sole proprietor then you don't have anybody else the irs couldn't get anybody else to take your money for them so they're gonna have to take it themselves by having you file the schedule c and pay the social security and medicare not by filing a w-2 
the IRS probably thinks that's too complicated and would discourage people from doing small businesses because payroll is a pain. So instead, we're going to take the net income from the Schedule C and treat that, in essence, as though that's your W-2 income, both on the employee and employer side, calculating the Social Security and Medicare self-employment tax on that amount. All right, keeping that in mind, we're continuing on with the non-farm optional method. So we talked about the methods for calculating the self-employment tax, and usually you would use basically the default method, which we'll take a look at in the form in a bit more detail in a future presentation. But sometimes you might use different optional methods, which might result in larger social security uh, and Medicare taxes, self-employment tax, but could actually be beneficial in some cases. Why in the world which would it be beneficial possibly to pay more of the taxes? Well, number one, sometimes you have these credits that actually go up when you, when you have more uh, income. So it might have an impact on those, the big one being the, the um, earned income tax credit. So, so in other words, the credit amount might actually go up as your earned income go up and you might have some impact with uh, the self-employment tax calculation on that credit, which can be substantial. And then number two, it might sometimes be more beneficial to pay more into the social security because then you're gonna get bigger benefits when it pays out. Again, I would highly not recommend doing that if you're not close to the age of social security to receive social security because i truly believe that social security is going to hit the wall at some point and they're going to have to make substantial changes to it because the current people receiving social security were basically stealing from the kids right we're stealing from future generations because it's not actually funded that's why they, there's a population problem meaning we need to have more kids why so they can support the already people that are on social security, right? It's kind of a problem. It's kind of a, a pyramid scheme that is going to hit the wall. We've seen it happen in other countries. It's going to be a problem. So we don't want to be dependent on social security if we're far away from it, if at all possible. But if you're close to retirement age, then it's likely they're not going to hit the people uh, with, with, with the problem that are close to retirement age, because that would be very unpopular to do uh, politically and not exactly fair. Uh, to do so I don't know how exactly they're gonna fix it or if it's gonna fix itself when it hits the wall but that's the general idea so if you're close to Social Security it might actually be beneficial to pay more in if that would give you a bigger payment out of Social Security okay non far optional method use the non farm optional method only for earnings that do not come from farming so you may use this method if you meet all the following tests so you are self-employed on a regular basis. This means that your actual net earnings from self-employment were $400 or more in at least two of the three tax years before uh, one for which you use this method. For this purpose, the prior year net earnings can be from either farm or non-farm earnings or both. So you have used this method less than five years. There's a five-year time limit, uh, lifetime limit. So the years do not have to be one after another. Your net non-farm profits were less than $7,103 and less than 72.189% of your gross non-farm income. Net non-farm profit. So net non-farm profit is generally the total of the amounts from line 31 of Schedule C, that's the Form 1040, and Box 14, Code A of Schedule K1, Form uh, 1065. In other words, if you have a partnership situation, then the partnership income might be treated similarly to a sole proprietorship, it flowing through with the use of the K1 and then being subject to self-employment. That being different than the other flow-through entity, an S-corporation, in which case you do typically have to pay yourself, basically, wages uh, to deal with the payroll taxes in order to do what the IRS wants you to do and not get in trouble. So, however, you may need to adjust the amount reported on Schedule K-1 if you are a general partner or if it is a loss. 
So gross non-farm income, your gross non-farm income is generally the total of the amounts from line seven of schedule C, form 1040, and box 14, code C of schedule K1. That's the form 1065 partnership return. Figuring non-farm net earnings. So if you meet the three tests explained earlier, using the following table to figure your non-farm net earnings from self-employment under the non-farm optional method, table one or 10-1, figure non-farm net earnings. So if your gross non-farm income is 9,840 or less, then your net earnings are equal to two thirds of your gross non-farm income. If it's more than 9,840, uh, then your net earnings are equal to $7,103. Optional net earnings less than actual net earnings. <clears throat> you cannot use this method to report an amount less than your actual non-farm net earnings from self-employment. Your actual non-farm net earnings are uh, your non-farm net earnings figured using the regular method, which was explained earlier. Gross non-farm income of $9,840 or less. The following example illustrates how to figure net earnings with gross non-farm income is $9,840 or less. All right, let's look at example number one. Net non-farm profit less than $7,103 and less than 72.189% of gross non-farm income. So you run a craft business. Your actual net earnings from self-employment were $800 in 2021, $900 in 2022. You meet the test for being self-employed on a regular basis. So it's not a hobby, you're self-employed. You have used the non-farm optional method less than five years, so you can qualify to use it because it's been less than five years. So your gross income and net profit in 2023 are as follows. Gross non-farm income, $5,400. Net non-farm income, $1,200. So your actual net earnings for 2023 are 1108 which is the $1,200 times the 0.9235 because your net profit is less than $7,103 and less than $72, 72.189%. Your gross income, you can use the non-farm optional method to figure net earnings of $3,600, two-thirds of the $5,400. Because these net earnings are higher than your actual net earnings, you can report net earnings of 3600 So you can see kind of the result of this is your net earnings, in essence, are higher <clears throat> than they otherwise would be. Again, you might say, well, that's not good for taxes because the higher your income is, the more taxes you pay, which is the general rule. But like I say, sometimes that could be beneficial. Why? Because you might be having an earned income tax credit, for example, in which case it, your credit might actually go up as your income goes up at least to a certain degree. Or you might be trying to pay more into Social Security because you're close to retirement and that would increase possibly the level of benefits you would receive. So example two, net non-farm profit less than $7,103, but not less than 72 uh, 189 of gross non-farm income. All right, assume that in example one, your gross income is $1,200 and your net profit is $900. You must use the regular method to figure your net earnings. You cannot use the non-farm optional method because your net profit is not less than 72.189 of your gross income. Software, of course, possibly could help with these situations as well in these calculations but you you are going to need to know when they might be beneficial right and those are and then and then try to figure out how to help the software do the calculations and double check the calculations are properly being calculated and again when would it be beneficial possibly as we saw before in prior presentation 
when you might have to increase income might actually be a good thing, right? Because of the credits. So example three, so net loss from a non-farm business. Assume that in example one, you have a net loss of $700. So you can use the non-farm optional method and report 3,600, which is two thirds of the 5,400 as your net earnings. Again, why in the world would you do that? A loss is usually good because then you can take the loss against other income but maybe you don't have any other income to take the loss against, for example, and you would rather have an increase in income because an increase in income would result in a higher earned income tax credit and so on and so forth and possibly pay into the social security system, which could result in higher benefits. So example four, non-farm net earnings less than $400. Assume that in example one, you have gross income of $525 and a net profit of $175. And this situation, you would not pay any self-employment tax under either the regular method or the non-farm optional method because your net earnings uh, under both methods are less than $400. Gross non-farm income of more than $9,840. The following example illustrates how to figure net earnings when gross non-farm income is more than $9,840. Example one, net non-farm profit less than $7,103 uh, and less than 72.189% of gross uh, non-farm income. So you run an appliance uh, repair shop your actual net earnings from self-employment were $10,500 in 2021, $9,500 in 2022. You meet the test for being self-employed on a regular basis. You have used the non-farm optional method less than five years. So your gross income and net profit in 2023 are as follows. Gross non-farm income, $12,000. Net non-farm profit, 1,200. Your actual net earnings for 2023 are $1,108, 1,200 times the 0.9235 because your net profit is less than $7,103 and less than 72.189 of your gross income. You can use the non-farm optional method to figure net earnings of $6,560. Because these net earnings are higher than your actual net earnings, you can report net earnings of six thousand five hundred and sixty dollars for two thousand twenty-three. Example two: net non-farm profit not less than seven thousand one hundred and three dollars. Assume that in example one, your net profit is eight thousand nine hundred dollars. You must use the regular method. You cannot use the non-farm optional method because your net non-farm profit is less than is not less than seven thousand one hundred and three dollars example three net loss from a non-farm business assume that in example one you have a net loss of seven hundred dollars you can use the non-farm optional method and report six thousand five hundred and sixty dollars as your net earnings from self-employment all right farm optional method Remember that when we think about the farm situation, there's a lot of uh, things specific to a farm. So it's a place of specialization uh, that might be good for some people. And if you're not specialized in that area, you got to make sure if you're picking up clients in farming that you're ready to do some research and or not pick up those clients if you're not willing to do the research. So use the farm optional method only for earnings from a farming business. See publication 225 for information about this method using both optional methods. So if you have both farm and non-farm earnings, you may be able to use both optional methods to determine your net earnings from self-employment. To figure your net earnings using both optional methods, you must do the following. Figure your farm and non-farm net earnings separately under each method. Do not combine farm earning with non-farm earnings to figure your net earnings under either method. Add the net earning figure under each method to arrive at your total net earnings from self-employment. You can report less than your total actual farm and non-farm net earnings, but not less than actual non-farm net earnings. If you use both optional methods, 
you can report no more than $6,560 as your combined net earnings from self-employment. Table 10-2, example farm and non-farm earnings, income and earnings. So we have the gross income, farm, non-farm, the actual net earnings for the farm, non-farm, and the optional net earnings, two-thirds of gross income for the farm and non-farm. Table 10-3 shows four methods of combinations of methods you can use to figure net earnings from self-employment using the farm and non-farm gross income and actual net earnings shown in Table 10-2. Method 1, using the regular method for both farm and non-farm income. Method number two, using the optional method for farm income and the regular method for non-farm income. Method number three, using the regular method for farm income and the optional method for non-farm income. And four method, using the optional method for both farm and non-farm income. So here's, here's the table we have on the example for the net earnings the actual farm and so on. Here's going to be our methods. I won't go into that in detail. All right, fiscal year filer. If you use a tax year other than the calendar year, you must use the, the tax rate and maximum earning limit in effect at the beginning of your tax year. So this often is not usually the case, but again, the, when we have a Schedule C, oftentimes we're using a calendar year fiscal year but if it's not a calendar year you have some complications with some of the with some of the calculations and the regulations that should be applied so once again if you use a tax year other than the calendar year you must use the tax rate and maximum earning limits in effect at the beginning of your tax year even if the tax rate or maximum earning limit changes during your tax year continue to use the same rate and limit throughout your tax year all right reporting self-employment tax i uh, use schedule se form 1040 to figure and report your self-employment tax so we'll take a look at that in an example problem shortly or in a file following presentation. If you file form 1040 or 1040 SR, enter the self-employment tax on line four of schedule two and attach schedule SE to your form. If you file form 1040 SS, enter the self-employment tax on line three and attach schedule SE to your form. Caution. If you need to pay self-employment tax, you must file form 1040, 1040 SR, 1040 SS as applicable with Schedule SE attached, even if you do not otherwise have to file a federal income tax return. In other words, if you're not required to file the return, possibly because your income is below a certain threshold or something like that, the IRS still wants to make sure that you are paying your self-employment tax if you're subject to self-employment tax. Therefore, you need to file the return so that they could get the self-employment information and that will also feed into like the benefits for self-employment uh, and social security joint return even if you file a joint return uh, you cannot file a joint schedule se this is true whether one spouse or both spouses have earnings subject to the self-employment tax so we talked about this a bit uh, in a prior presentation remember that the it would it would be nice if we could say that the two people that got married are now one entity for taxes and for many situations they kind of are but not for social security and medicare because that's tied to the individual uh, social security numbers so we have this situation this problem of who do we assign the income to with regards to the social security number under different situations for a business if the business was owned by one spouse then you would assign all of the income to that spouse, which would not have an impact generally on the calculation of the tax return, although it could if they hit the cap for like the social security limit or something like that, whereas it, they wouldn't hit the cap if they split it 50-50. But it will have an impact uh, on the, the, the payment of the social security benefits. If they both own the business, then the question is, do they need to file a partnership return? Do they file as a joint venture? Can they split the income between the two of them? In which case they might have like one Schedule C, but two uh, Schedule SEs so they could properly break out the income to the two people 
for calculations of the self social security tax. So if both of you, and that might depend in part, by the way, on the state that you're living in, is it a community property state or not? So if both you have earnings subject to self-employment tax, each of you must complete a separate Schedule SE. So for example, if you had two Schedule Cs because each spouse had their own business, then they would both need a different Schedule SE because the Schedule SE is assigning to different social security numbers. If both of them were partners or were working on the same business, then if you're using a joint venture situation or you have a community property state, then you might have one schedule, you still, you might have two Schedule Cs that you have to break out or the, the one Schedule C possibly in a community property state, but you'd still need two uh, SE, Schedule SEs breaking out the Social Security. Okay, uh, so let's do this. More than one business. So if you have more than one trade or business, you must combine the net profit or loss from each business to figure your self-employment tax. So a loss from one business will reduce your profit from another business. File one Schedule SE showing the earnings from self-employment, but file a separate Schedule C or F for each business. So now you might be a single individual who has multiple businesses, multiple Schedule Cs, for example. The, that means that you, you're going to have to combine those Schedule Cs together to report the Schedule SE, the self-employment tax, because the self-employment tax is based on self-employment income, total self-employment income. And you have to make sure that you need one Schedule SE per person in part because you have to deal with those limits, meaning you have the, the cap on the amount that you pay into self-employment tax and you have that progressive situation with the Medicare that tax. So example, so you are the sole proprietor of two separate businesses. Good for you, you must be busy. So you operate restaurant that made a net profit of 25,000. You also have a, a cabinet making business that had a net loss of $500. Sounds like a hobby, man. I don't know, but whatever. It's, it's a business, not a hobby. It's a business. So you must file schedule C for the restaurant showing uh, your net profit of 25,000 and another schedule C for the cabinet making business showing your net loss of $500. You file a Schedule SE showing total earnings subject to SE tax of $24,500. It's combined together for the Schedule SE.